Straight to the papers, they're reacting to that highly anticipated speech yesterday we were telling you about, of course, by uh, Theresa May. British government uh, confirming its Brexit plans. Goodbye to the single uh, market. Goodbye to the European Court of Justice. And farewell to the freedom, freedom of movement of workers. <laughs> That's right. Lots Hello. of goodbyes in that speech. It's all about global Britain. It said so on her podium. Now, uh, you can get a lot of uh, reactions, I guess you could say, in the French papers. Really picking apart that speech she made yesterday. Uh, let's start with Le Pignon, the pro-business paper, saying essentially what Brexit means is less Europe and more of the rest of the world. And I love this cartoon. You can see <laughs> <laughs> Theresa May looking a lot like Mary Poppins. Mary May. That, that bag there that says leave. <laughs> uh, and she's not singing super califragilistic expialidocious. <laughs> she's singing super Brexit, fragis Europe, Cassus belly, lo- all sorts of things that are quite <laughs> negative uh, for Europe. Now, Le Pignon says, look, if you actually take a look at her program, uh. it's quite coherent. It really is in line with the English history. It's rooted in English history. But is it feasible? That's what Le Pignon wants to know, uh, especially given the fact that its priority is the refusal of immigration. It certainly isn't a soft Brexit, is it? Absolutely. Now, what's interesting is in the Anglo-Saxon press, we talk about a hard Brexit. Well, that doesn't really mean that much to French people. So a Libération has chosen a new phrase. It's not the hard Brexit. It's the integral Brexit. I guess that's the way uh, they're summing it up. And in fact, if you want to know more about the Brexit and you speak French, do read this article. It's quite a, a good explainer mm. there. Now, Le Figaro, the right wing paper, is very critical of this hard line. Uh, and describes Theresa May as someone uh, thumping her fist on the table, saying no, no, no to EU leaders, saying no deal is better than a bad deal. Uh, So you can see they're saying this is very threatening, and it's very threatening towards Europe. Uh, Actually likens her to another British prime minister, Margaret Thatcher. Of course, it's an an easy one (laughs) to make. Uh, But what's interesting is Le Figaro uses an expression in French saying that she wants the the butter and the money from the butter. Uh, Essentially, she wants to have her cake and eat it. And Le Figaro says that's asking for a little bit too much. A lot of the French papers are quite alarmed about what it actually means for Europe as well, aren't they, Flo? Uh, May speech coming just a few days, of course, after that, uh, those anti-European comments by uh, Donald Trump as well. That's right, Donald Trump, who said that he fully supports Brexit. Uh, Let's take a look at the front page of La Croix, the Catholic paper. You can see this photo here of of a very menacing-looking Donald Trump, Theresa May. uh, And La Croix points out that, look, on top of all this, you have China, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, who's redefining himself as the defender of globalization. What is going on? Le monde chahuté, essentially, the world is disrupted. It's completely turned upside down. You know, what what used to be one thing is flipped upside down. Uh, And Libération follows in line with this and says, you know, there's also the threat of Russia. Uh, So you can see uh, Libération saying that the EU is completely caught in a vice. It's facing a historic challenge. We're going to have to stick together Mm. if we want to survive this storm, says Libération. That's the flipping, now the slapping. Um, French politics, uh, former Prime Minister Manuel Valls running in the left-wing primary, and he received a bit of a slap on the face. That's right, and this was caught on tape. Uh, So if you want to take a look, do uh, head online. Just about every French media is is focusing on this video. You have screen grabs here in this article in Aujourd'hui en France, Le Parisien. You can see the young man in Brittany was quickly brought under control by by Valls' security guards. Now... Le Parisien says this might have been a small slap, but it was a big hit in terms of PR just a couple of days before round one of that left-wing primary. And and Le Parisien reminds readers it's not the first time that Manuel Valls has been physically assaulted on his very short campaign. He hasn't been campaigning very long. Mm. Uh, back in December, for instance, a protester threw flour uh, at him. So uh, Le Parisien says, look, this is a real slap in the face, but it also comes after a more symbolic slap in the face. And that's the fact that his campaign is having a really hard time getting off the ground, particularly compared to one of his main rivals, who's not even running in the prime minister, in the primary, and that's the former economy minister, Emmanuel Macron. Mm-hmm. He's upset because Macron is a lot more popular than he is on the campaign trail. Uh, and there's an interesting quote by a, a, a socialist heavyweight, I guess you could say, that's trying to understand why Valls is being picked on like mm-hmm. this on the campaign trail. And it says, look, he wants to embody authority, and so it's coming back in his face. I'm going to talk about babies now on the programme. France, uh, famous for being a baby-making champion in Europe, but the numbers have actually gone that way, haven't they? They've gone down for That's a second right. year in a row. Two years in a row. Does France have a case of the baby blues? That's what the press wants to know today. You can get all the details here in Les Ecou, the business paper. In 2014, French women had on average two children. Well, that figure dropped to 1.93 
in 2016. But don't worry, France is still a baby-making champion in Europe, much higher than its neighboring countries. And also, population specialists say this dip is just temporary. Paper's also focusing on another dip. Uh, that's in the temperature. Um, it's freezing here. One of some of the coldest weather it's been for a few years now. Absolutely. Minus two when I left my house this morning. Very mm -hmm. cold. Now, what's interesting is Le Parisien reports that, you know, weather channels used to report about the actual temperature. But these days, they report about the real temperature and also what it feels like, which yeah. sometimes isn't the same thing. For instance, uh, you can see they're talking about what we're expecting in Nîmes this morning. It's mm -hmm. officially going to be minus four degrees. It's going to feel like minus 13 degrees. Wow. Why the difference? Well, it has to do with wind chill. Uh, and there's actually a good little graphic inside Le Parisien if you want to know more. Essentially, if the wind is blowing at 60 kilometers an hour and it's minus 5 degrees, it feels like minus 16, which is a sure sign you can <laughs> stay in bed under the covers. <laughs> I love the little guy getting blown around. At least there's no wind in here. Yes. Thank you both. Play <laughs> film over the papers. Next half hour, uh, in today's focus, we're going to be reporting on the plight of hundreds of refugees, many of whom have spent the last three years living in a makeshift camp on a runway in Central Africa. Now, they're being moved back to their homes, but that means to areas where, once again, they fear for their safety. 